Hi, this is Mark with Macroscopic Solutions. Today, uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using the 50x objective with the Macropod Pro 3D and Micro Kit. Uh, so previously, we did the 10 and the 20x, whereas today this is going to be a little bit different because we're dealing with uh, magnifications that are two and a half times what we used before. Um, so, like always, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn on the stack shot and plug in the camera battery. And then I'm going to give myself a little bit of space to remove the 20x objective and replace it with the 50x objective. So I'm just going to pull the stage back. I'm going to grab the camera by its foot plate and press it back slightly. Brace the adapter plate and unscrew the 20x with two hands. Okay, so now that that's off, we're going to take off the diffuser as well. And that's going to be the last time that we use that diffuser because that's used only on the 10 and the 20x objective. Uh, when we use a 50x objective, the working distance gets to be a little bit smaller. Uh, so we need to take that into account with a diffuser that has, well, basically allows for a little bit more of a working space. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to tighten that back up, grab our 50x objective, and then we're going to grab a diffuser that's specifically designed for that objective. And in that case, that's this one here. So you can see the aperture is a lot smaller. That's because the field of view isn't nearly as large as it is with a 10 or a 20x objective. And at the same time, if you look at it uh, horizontally, you'll see that the, the, the shade doesn't uh, sort of protrude out as much as it does on the 10 and 20x objective diffuser. Um, so what that does is it prevents a lot of light from entering the objective but it maxima maximizes the amount of light that gets reprojected back onto your sample. So we're going to go ahead, we're just going to screw that on tightly. There you go. Take the objective, take its base off, and again using two hands you just want to tighten that onto the front of the adapter. Now lens settings are exactly the same, they don't change, so 200 millimeter uh, you have your button set to 1.2 millimeter or 1.2 meter working distance as opposed to the 2.4. Um, all the ultrasonic motors must be turned off and again you're going to be using manual focus. And again because the pin is not going to get in the way, flat end is going to be up. That way we're maximizing a lot of light uh, that's going to be bouncing off the, the front of this diffuser. So we'll go ahead and we'll turn the light on. We'll turn the camera on. We're just going to move the camera back into its original position so we'll just slide it forward slightly. And the stage is in a good position at the moment. We'll just slide it forward just a tad uh, so we get a little bit closer to that objective. I'm going to put this off to the side. And then I'm going to open up my EOS utility. And we're going to create a third folder, um, which is going to be our 50x objective. So we'll just go to the folder icon and navigate to where we've been storing our photos before. Uh, in this case, it's Weevil Scales New Folder 50x Objective. And we're going to create that folder, press Open, OK, and now it's time to configure the shot. Now, remember, depth of field is going to be so much smaller, working distance is going to be so much shorter, um, but that's OK. Um, it just requires a little bit more patience when working with this objective, but not too much. It's still relatively easy to use. So make sure your camera is in automatic. Uh, that way you can see what it is you're doing. You can see the sample moving around. And I'm going to touch on some things we touched on earlier, uh, but at least demonstrate it with the 50x objective. Okay, so you can see there's, there's even a little bit of dust on the objective. I did clean these recently. It's not going to interfere with the shot too much, so I think for the demonstration we're going to leave it there. But at least what we'll do is we'll move the stage forward just until the specimen starts to come into the field of view. So we're, we're finally finding... Uh, the area of this. Basically, we're bringing the, the subject into the focal plane. We're almost there. Oh, just went through it. So again, you can you can really see how short uh, and narrow the focal plane is. But again, you can see how close we are to this subject, uh, which is, is pretty phenomenal. Um, we're resolving details that are on the order of, of 10 microns here. Each of those scales that you see is probably between 10 and 20 microns in diameter, maybe even a little less, uh, and we're only at 50x. So typically most people are already going to the scanning electron microscope where they're using alternative imaging methods such as confocal, whereas we can, we can, get a, we can generate a very good image uh, just using uh, reflected light microscopy. So 
Now that I've got the focal plane, the subject in the focal plane, what we're going to do is go ahead and we're going to set up the parameters of this image once again. So I'm going to press the up arrow ever so slightly just until everything just starts to go out of focus. So I'm just going to tap the up arrow a few times until the motor catches. It looks like it caught there and you can see we, we, we already shot over it a little too far. Um, so we're just going to bring it back. All right, one more tap and that's good. So nothing's in focus. You don't want anything in focus, but you just want to make sure that the focal plane is behind uh, the area that you're going to be shooting. Now what we're going to do is we're going to push the beetle back. So we're going to move the focal plane through the specimen so that now we're focused towards the front. And again, we don't, we don't want to stop there. You can see that we're almost out of focus, but given the, um, the room we need to allow for any, any wiggle or any um, loose ends that, that's associated with the servo, we, would, we would just want to overshoot that mark until everything is out of focus, just like it is here. It's okay to overshoot it in the end. I promise you it's way more time consuming to do this. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to take the camera and we're going to set it back to manual. We're going to turn the flash on. And this time, um, we need to, to basically get a lot more light onto the sample. So before we were using an ISO of 200, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to increase the flash power by a factor of two. So instead of one eighth power, we're going to be shooting at one fourth power. Hit OK. We're going to turn off the direct light source. And I think also for this shot, what we're also going to be doing is we're going to bump up the ISO. Uh, it's probably to 400, but we'll just test that real fast. So first we'll just go go here, change the ISO, we'll open up a quick, quick preview window. Remember the lens settings don't change, uh, exposure doesn't change, 1 over 200, uh, aperture doesn't change, f2.8, and again the flash is going to maintain, uh, you're, you're going to be at one, 1 over 4. Um, and 1 over 4 or 1 over 2 is usually what you should be using whenever you use a 50x or 100x objective. And if you are using the 100x objective, same diffuser, just probably use one over two on the flash output and adjust your ISO accordingly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and capture a test image just to see how bright this might be. It's pretty good, it's not as bright as I want it. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take up the ISO just up one notch, probably to 500, give that a shot. And that's a little bit better. It's more consistent with what we were producing when we were photographing uh, using the 10 and the 20X objectives. So with that, what we're going to do now is navigate to the Active 2D folder where we have the 50X images stored. And we're going to delete the test images we just captured. And now we're gonna to turn to um, our stack shot. We're gonna press start uh, and we're gonna watch uh, the images go through. Actually, before I do that, I completely forgot. I need to adjust the number of steps. So previously with the 20X objective, we used 150 photographs we're two and a half times as close. So theoretically, you want to up this to around 300 photographs. You want to be taking 300. And again, that's a safety because we overshot the area that we would be imaging. Uh, there is a, a function on the StackShot controller that allows you, it's basically an ultra high precision mode, which, which really sort of, basically it, it's a little bit more precise. Uh, it, it basically, there's a little sound or a pitch you'll hear that comes from the servo. I never use it. Um, I'm generally able to produce very good results just by capturing a sufficient number of photographs throughout the, the two between the two parameters that I set. So I think that's okay. Uh, but 300 images again, that's that's about what you want to be capturing at at 50x. And where, when you're at 100x, because depth isn't such a big problem, you're really focusing on something that's that doesn't have a lot of depth. So at 100x, 350, 300 to 350 images still works out for the 100x. Uh, 400 is always going to be safe. Um, but that's your general rule of thumb and a good set of starting parameters for you to, to use. So with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press start. And uh, we're going to begin capturing 300 photographs through uh, the abdomen of this weevil. Okay, so we're through the specimen entirely now, at least the area that we're interested in. So what we can do is we can turn the flash off 
we can turn the camera off, we can turn the stack shot off either by unplugging it or turning it, turning it off. So we have our images, they're stored here. Uh, we're not going to be taking any other images that we're going to be storing in this folder, but just out of habit, I always just add a one just in case I want to redo or recapture some photos. If I find there's an error in the stacking process and so forth, then we can easily redo it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to open up Zareen Stacker. And same as all the other objectives, we captured all of the photos with the 50x objective from back to front, and here we're going to stitch them together from front to back. So uh, we're going to take Finder, we're going to take where we just captured our images, pull them into Input Files, and then we're going to go to File, Reverse Order, and then we want to start to stack. This is pretty interesting. I'm sure now that you, you've realized we're at 50x magnification, you've seen that um, the scales actually have a really unique property. Um, I'm, being a geologist, I always, always noted that the scales on these weevils sort of look a lot like the mineral opal wood, which is hydrated silica, and it's pretty neat. I, I looked into it a little bit to see if there's any research papers out there to see if people have looked into the composition of these scales. Uh, some people have looked into it, but I didn't see any conclusive microprobe analysis or if they actually tested if it was hydrated silica, so to see if this beetle is maybe sequestering silica. So that's been an interesting thing. I think it's a, a neat demonstration of how, you know, really honing in your skills on the microscope or high resolution microscopic photography can kind of lead to a discovery um, that hasn't been published or written about too much yet. <clears throat> okay, so this is now finished. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll just take a look at the, the image. So we'll go to 50% first. And you can see the quality is pretty good. Uh, there's really no noise. Uh, the Basically the pixels is pretty smooth all throughout, which is pretty good. And there's 100% at 50x. So now you can really kind of get a good sense of what the individual scale looks like on the back of, uh, of this weevil. And you can see there's there's not a lot of glare. I mean, when we're dealing with this scale, I mean, we're looking at things here in this field of view again, uh, which are on the order of microns in size. So we're we're getting pretty close to the theoretical limit of what we're able to do uh, with with optical light and reflected light microscopy. Um, but again, we've done it pretty well and overall pretty fast. Um, so what I'll do is again, I'm going to just save this image. So save the output image in the 30x folder as a TIFF file. And then the next time we see you, um, I'm going to be giving a, a brief tutorial video about how to go ahead and edit uh, these images captured with the objectives. Um, so yep, now that that's saved, uh, again, I just want to thank you for tuning in to this tutorial video. Uh, thank you for choosing Macroscopic Solutions, and until next time, see you later.